For those of you who don't know me, I guess I should introduce myself. I'm Susan Dyson. I'm proud to be the CEO, president, and founder of this amazing organization. We have over 1,200 member businesses from small business owners like you to uh, Fortune 500 companies like Chevron Phillips. So we're very excited to be able to represent women uh, from all the way from Baytown to Montgomery County, and so we're very excited to meet all of you that are on the call today and, and really salute you for taking this step to become certified. It's going to mean so much, I think, to your success, and you're going to love Marsha. I mean, she is amazing, so welcome again, and I do want to introduce, we have our two um, Baytown, our uh, Bay Area chapter leaders, Amanda Eves with PGAD. Amanda, you want to say hello and Hi everyone. It's great to see everyone today. Um, it's it's so so nice to be able to to do this and still connect um, virtually. And you know, I feel like even though we're not in person, um, just spending time with all of you and you know, uh, really being able to share ideas and just kind of help each other. Um, I just really appreciate every everyone being on the call and really being able to see everyone's faces as well. And Anne shared later that you were going to treat us all to dinner if we came to Clear Lake. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Anne, do you want to introduce yourself? Anne Krieger sure, is our Sure. Hi, ladies. I'm Anne Krieger. I'm a financial advisor with Morgan Stanley in our Clear Lake office. Um, I apologize for having my camera off today. I'm having some work done around my house. Uh, but it is uh, wonderful. <clears throat> You all today. I can't wait till we um, are able to connect in person again. Um, I'm, I'm definitely ready for it. So, right, right. Well, I'm glad. and Amanda and Ann are are both part of our resources. So, when you're needing um, a CPA or you're needing some financial advice, you know, the all of their information is on our website for you to reach out to because I know they'll be very instrumental. And then we have a board member uh, too as well with us and also the chapter leader of Baytown, Heather Bethencourt. And also she is a small business owner. So we're so excited to, um, to help her and we're going to go and visit at Baytown. Why don't you share a little bit about what's going on there? I'm so excited to hear. Hi everyone. Uh, I do recognize some Baytown names. Thank y'all for joining us. Gladys, it's good to see you. and. Tara, she's on our uh, chapter advisory committee. So lots of good things going on in Baytown. Uh, this topic is definitely of interest to our group and we're so happy to partner with the Bay Area chapter for today's meeting. Right, right. <clears throat> Poor good. Well, um, why don't we go around? I know Marsha would love to hear who's on the call today because it might flavor what she says to, to all of y'all. So uh, Christine, why don't you start? <clears throat> I'm actually going to be becoming a, um, a member in two different ways. Um, I work for a company called Offshore Inspection Group, um, which is in the oil and gas industry. Um, we do offshore inspections, um, risk analysis, quality management systems, safety systems, um, commissioning, decommissioning, and a bunch of proposal and technical writing. So that's one company, but I also um, have started my own company um, in doing a lot of technical writing, proposals, setting up different systems. And just with COVID, um, it's kind of turned into um, like a virtual assistant kind of, you know, go to to get um, documentation and system information set up and, and completed. So I'm a very um, detailed oriented person, real go getter. And um, like I find and a lot of a lot of women um, having to figure out how to make things happen and be a parent. I was a single parent for 20 years. So there's a lot of skill set that I learned to really figure out how to make things happen where being an oil and gas, being the only woman and usually in a room full of men, I was always the go-to person to get things done. So I'm happy to be uh, joining and, and part of a group that really mentors and young, young women to, you know, to be able to make it out there. 
Ah, well, welcome. I know Shayla was sharing your story with me and we're so excited to have you part, part of the chamber, especially coming from a male dominated um, industry. Yes. So Marsha sees a lot of that when she's mm -hmm. helping um, minorities and, and women owned businesses. So I know she's going to yes. have a lot to, to help help you with today. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> good. So, so I'm filling in for the president of Offshore Inspection Group, which is um, Kelly McClellan, and she is a phenomenal, just really phenomenal um, woman to to work with. She and I work really well together, and she really um, pushes for you to think outside the box and you know be able to pull things together. So I'm I'm excited <laughs> for her too. Right, and we I want you to meet Samina Farid, who sold her business. You had a technology Ooh. energy company and um, sold it wow. probably six or seven years ago. So I know she still is investing in companies, wow. you know, too, as well. So she'd be a good resource for you. Okay. Yeah. So Thank Gladys, you. let us hear from you. Um, my name is Gladys Pryor. I am the executive director for Love Network of Baytown, located here in Baytown, Texas. And uh, we help people who are in need of basic needs and work related items. So anything from feminine products to uh, rental assistance and food and um, any clothing or training that uh, people may need to be able to enter into the workforce. Great, welcome, welcome. <clears throat> We're always glad to see your face, thank you. <laughs> and Ms. D Diaz. Hi, my name is Imal. My last name is Diaz. I work for the oil field for a big company. Right now, I am I have the position of a HSC manager for 37 manufacturer plants. So I, I look all over the place. And at the same time, I try to start my own business. So I want to get acquainted with, with what's going on in the city and around and learn from all these experienced women that, that have been doing this for a long time. So this is this is my first time in one, in one of these mm -hmm. forums. I have attended a couple here in, in the city of Houston and I'm very excited to meet you all. Right, welcome, welcome. Um, gosh, that's unusual to have two <clears throat> women wow. in the energy space. So that's, that's great, glad, welcome. So uh, Rory, why don't you introduce yourself? Rory's having difficulty with her audio. She with said, her audio. Oh, no. Mm -hmm. Well, we're excited. Rory is also one of our ambassadors and um, has really been is in the <clears throat> apartment industry, um, too, as well. So I know she's going to learn a lot, lot today, too, as well. So, uh, Tara, <clears throat> would you like to introduce yourself? All right. Good afternoon, everyone. So my name is Tara Schneeberger. I am the training superintendent at Chevron Phillips. Um, so I'm a chemical engineer by background. And like Christine mentioned, there's been several times in my career um, where I've been the only woman in the room and um, been talked over and called bossy. And <laughs> it's, oh, yeah. uh, it's almost a rite of passage at this point. Um, and so I I love this community and being part of the chapter because this is really what it's about. It's forming the collaborations and having that, that network and that foundation of support to continue to provide assistance for, for women and, and continue to, to be trailblazers in our field. So thank you for having me today. Oh, I love that you dropped that word, trailblazer. I love it. I love it. <laughs> That's great. Also, uh, while I'm thinking about it, um, Marsha, is the Chevron Phillips accept the city's uh, certification? You know, I actually don't know offhand. I, I hope so. One of the things I want to mention in my presentation is about how, you know, we're trying to expand uh, the number of private sector entities that accept. Because I know so Slumberjay does, KBR, you know, a lot of them do recognize <clears throat> the city designation, so it'd be good for us to... You know, I think Chevron does, because I think there was someone dedicated that uh, we used to work with at Chevron, um, but don't quote me on that. Okay, well, good. We'll, we'll investigate. <clears throat> and on the screen, it says L-A-F-R-N. That's me. Um, this is Laura Franca Davis. Um, I'm a member of the greater uh, of the of the chamber, but I am um, here today to represent Panino and Partners. 
um, Laura Panino. I am a contractor with her. I own my own communications firm, but I also do a lot of subcontracting. And Laura is um, one of the companies that I that I do that for. And so Panino and Partners does media relations. They do um, a lot of writing projects, public relations, um, community outreach, um, just a lot of different communication services. So I, she asked me to join on behalf of her today. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, we're very familiar with, with your company. Now, are you certified woman-owned? Um, I am not. My, my company, which is LFD Communications, is not. Um, I'm not sure about Panino and Partners. Okay, well, good. Well, we need to get you certified then. Good. Well, Thank and you. Charmel, <clears throat> see, you just came on the screen. Yes, I, I was having um, computer issues as well. My name is Charmel Huffman. I own a couple of companies. One is Reality of Wrestling. The other is Booker T Wrestling Network. We're in Texas City. And uh, Reality of Wrestling is kind of what it sounds, a wrestling promotion. We do weekly wrestling shows on our YouTube channel. Uh, the umbrella company for that, Booker T Wrestling Network. Again, we have our own facility in Texas City and we do everything, training people how to do television production, as well as training for a wrestling school. Hi, Stephanie. <laughs> and um, we also have expanded to the corporate world. We do corporate retreats and team building through wrestling. So we try to make all of that fun. And uh, that pretty much encompasses it. I think we may have met you before the pandemic, didn't we? Did, did you yes, absolutely. You? Yes. So you Good. Well, we're glad you're back. Thank you. I think things are finally coming back to, I'm not going to say normal, but um, yeah. I mean, yeah, they're getting better. So. And Stephanie, would you introduce yourself? Yes, Susan. I'm sorry. I'm having a little bit of video problem. Um, so give me one, one second. I'm going to kind of turn myself this way. I okay. see if I can get that to get started. Oh, we're so glad you had the time to be with us. Okay. Can you see me okay? Case study for um, women-owned businesses. So. Yeah, and I'm sorry. I just joined a couple minutes late. It's It's been that kind of week catching up from spring break. Um, are we just doing general introductions, Susan? Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm Stephanie Murphy. Um, I uh, live in Seabrook, and I'm part of the uh, Bay Area chapter, Board of Advisors, uh, which we're excited to get that going. And um, <clears throat> I own an aerospace engineering company here in the Clear Lake area, as well as um, a commercial space company. So two companies that do um, similar work, but um, also a little bit different stuff. And I'm, I'm just really happy to be here and be um, a part of this chamber. I've gotten involved over the last year. It's been a great place for networking um, and making some great connections. So thank you so much. Well, thank you for being with us. I know you're a great resource for any um, women business owner because I'm sure you've seen it all. <laughs> well, a little bit. And I, um, and I was lucky enough to, to try to get Charmel connected. So that's why when I popped on, she gave me a, a hello. Yes, I love Stephanie. <laughs> oh, great. Good, good. Um, okay, let's see. Um, Arlene, I think you popped up there. I did. Hi, everyone. My name is Arlene Hernandez. I'm with BBVA Bank. I actually am in business development. I also do financial literacy virtually. Um, I'm also the president of the Houston Volunteer Board for the BBVA chapter. So we've been uh -huh. definitely working really hard virtually. Um, I oversee the territory from Galveston all the way newly Baytown. So my territory is kind of getting a little... Uh, wider, but mainly southeast uh, part of town. So any uh, commercial needs that you need or consumer needs or anything like that, feel free to get in touch with me. Oh, great. Thank well, you for having me. We'll add you to our Baytown resources. Um, Absolutely. Yes, please do. Good. And April, April Jones, you want to introduce yourself? I think you're on mute. You're on mute. Thank you. I'm off mute now. <laughs> We're going to get a cup that we can hold up and say you're on mute. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Well, nice to meet everyone. Uh, my name is April Jones. I own Jones Consulting. 
my business pretty much does um, notary services and I mitigate risk in contracts such as master service agreements, NDAs, general terms, and I draft language. I am a paralegal as well by education and experience. Uh, I've been worked in the oil, oil and gas industry for the last 20 years for Exxon Mobil, BP, Schlumberger, Baker Hughes um, in their legal departments. And so I work their global contracts manager working around the world, mitigating risk and working with various attorneys in different countries, mitigating those risk and contracts. Happy to be here. I'm a, I'm a certified women uh, company as well, certified with uh, Houston Minority Supplier Development Council, the hub and port of Houston. And thank you for having me. And I'm sure Marsha will share how that plays partners in with the city, you know, too, as well, and just a little bit, because I need, I would love to understand it, too, as well, so welcome, my gosh, what powerhouses on the, on the call today, and I, I see we have a couple of phone numbers here, ending 8697, do you want to introduce yourself? 8528, that might be um, one of the people on the line that was having trouble and uh, Gina, Gina Guillory, you want to introduce yourself? Oh, well, uh -oh. okay, well, um. Did I lose y'all? No, we, we, can, we can still hear you. Okay, okay, there we go. Okay, well now I would like to um, introduce the two of my team members, my right hands here. First, Linda Avedon, thank you for joining us. She has really been um, a key in helping the Women's Business Center get started and up and running. Thank you for being with us, Linda. And um, Shayla, Shayla White is our executive director and she's gonna share a little bit more about the business center. Yes, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Shayla White and I'm so happy that you are here with us today. And we are thankful for the ability to increase opportunities for women in Houston. The Greater Houston Women's Chamber of Commerce hosts the SBA Women's Business Center serving the Houston region with an emphasis on uh, Montgomery County, East Harris County, and Chambers Counties. The Women's Business Center provides entrepreneurial women the education and resources they need to start and grow successful businesses. And we host educational workshops every month, just like this one, to provide opportunities for women to succeed. So I really am happy that you are here today. And thank you, Director Marsha, for hosting the, the session today. Thank you. Right. And I'm sorry, Elmari, I have overlooked you. You want to introduce yourself? The, the things pop around on the screen and I lose track of everybody. So. Yeah, that happens easily. Hey, I'm Elmari Van Wick. I am your belief coach. I help women to remove disempowering beliefs so that they can live with the passion and enthusiasm of a five-year-old with a magic wand. Wow. And I'm very happy to hear, be here with all these wonderful ladies and excited to cool. listen to the information you're sharing. Welcome, welcome. So did everyone introduce themselves? Okay, well, now we're gonna get started and please, um, if you will, uh, if you have any questions to put them in chat and we will leave room at the end. I know we're all gonna have a lot of questions to ask of, of Marsha. Would you rather and wait to the end to ask you or? You know what, I'm okay actually um, um, pausing as well. Okay. That's fine. Okay, good. Either is fine. Well, let me tell you a little bit about Marsha. Of course, I'd be here all day if I shared everything. So I have a synopsis here I'm going to share with you. So. Marsha was appointed by Mayor Sylvester Turner and confirmed by the City Council to serve as the Director of the City of Houston's Office of Business Opportunity in April of 2020, after having served as their Interim Director. 
As director, Ms. Murray is responsible for leading the city's supplier diversity, workforce development, and inclusion efforts with a focus on administering programs and initiatives that increase access to economic opportunity for historically underutilized businesses and disenfranchised individuals. For her work in OBO on behalf of Houston's business community in February uh, of 2019, she received the OBO's Advisory Board's Chairman's Advocate of the Year Award. Her advocacy for local businesses to expand their services and products to global markets led her to earn a designation as a certified global business professional to aid Houston businesses. She is a graduate of the Center of Houston's Future Business Civic Leadership Forum, and she serves on the board of Zonta Club of Houston, a global organization of professionals empowering women worldwide for service and advocacy. Marcia has also served on national and international panels advocating for the continued support, uh, support and development of small businesses. Um, Marcia accompanied the chamber for our first international trip to the UK. And Marcia, we have some wonderful news to report. I don't know if you've heard, but Parliament called me um, two weeks ago and wants me to come and uh, share um, information about the chamber. They want to use the chamber as a blueprint to start uh, women's chambers in uh, the UK. They also are going to support them financially, the government is, and they uh, are very excited to, for us to be their counselors. And so um, in April, it'll be a virtual introduction to them, but in June, I plan on traveling over there and visiting with them and, and really helping them, you know, to start the women's uh, business centers, similar to what we, we started here. So we're just so excited. So it did pay off. It was 2014 when we went. Um, so we fast forward to 2021 and it just shows you though how a small group of, of women and I'm always remember the quote, you know, that Margaret Mead saying that how a small group of, of people, you know, can change the world. It's the only thing that ever has, you know, and who would have ever thought that when we went over there with our, I think there was eight of us that we would actually influence parliament. So thank you for support and, and all you continue to do for us. My pleasure. Do you want me to get started? Yes, please. Okay, I'm going to share my screen. Let me know when you're able to see the first slide, the first large slide. See it? Okay. Let's just did that just. Well, Susan, thank you so much um, for, uh, for the introduction. I uh, really thank you all for the invitation to be able to speak with you today about the uh, city certification program and our various uh, services. I, I, I really do want to, I want to spend most of the time talking about certification, but I, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention the wide variety of business support services that the city of Houston offers. So the Office of Business Opportunity is committed to cultivating a competitive and diverse economic environment in the city of Houston. We do this by promoting the success of small businesses and developing Houston's workforce um, with a special emphasis on historically underutilized businesses, as Susan said. Uh, one of the ways in which we achieve this mission is actually through the administration of our minority women in small business enterprise program, as well as through inclusive efforts like our new LGBT business enterprise initiative. So I do want it, I wanted to actually just start off providing a, a brief overview of our office. We perform several core functions to advance our mission. Our certification team, of course, is responsible for administ administering the city's certification program, as well as the city's local preference procurement program. It's called Hire Houston First. Our contract compliance team enforces MWBE goals on contracts, in addition to ensuring that employees are paid required wages on construction projects. We also have an external affairs team dedicated to providing business and workforce initiatives, um, providing business and workforce development initiatives, as well as increasing our reach in the community. Finally, we maintain a close relationship with the Houston airport system to ensure the inclusion of our certified firms on city and federally uh, funded airport projects. So a lot of people don't realize that there are a lot of opportunities that exist 
at the airport in a wide variety of industries, in addition to our other 20 something um, contracting departments uh, within the city of Houston. So I wanted to just start off by um, just highlighting the city's commitment to be inclusive of, of women and minority owned business, businesses in our procurement process. So the city recognizes that historically minority women owned businesses have faced challenges with access to opportunities and continue to face some of those challenges. And so the city has committed to spending a certain percentage of our dollars uh, with minority and women owned businesses each year. So the city has designated aspirational goals uh, to spend at least 24% of the dollars that we spend in, on professional services with minority and women business enterprises, 11% in our goods and services area and 34% of our dollars um, on construction contracts. I wanted to just share with you, um, and this is a reminder to some, that we do put uh, minority women business enterprise goals on contracts, goods and services contracts that are valued over $100,000, um, city funded construction contracts that are valued over a million dollars, and our professional services contracts actually has no dollar threshold. So um, the eligible professional services contracts are subject to MWBE goals being placed on them. The way that we arrive at goals is by identifying who's available in the marketplace to actually do the work. So for our construction projects, for example, we put two separate goals, one for minorities and one for women. Whereas with our other contract types, it's actually a combined goal. But the same analysis is made as to what type of goal we go on the contract. Who's actually available in the marketplace to do the work? How many women business enterprises are certified to do the work? and how much divisibility is there for subcontracting on our projects. And so there's a standard industry uh, methodology for arriving at contract specific goals. But like I mentioned earlier, the city based on past studies has established these larger percentages to at least spend those amounts on um, in, the, in these different areas. So, um, so in order to ensure there's an eligible pool of minority, minority and women owned businesses to take advantage of the opportunities that we create through our goals, the, we administer the certi certification program, which has actually allowed us to build a pipeline of over 4,300 um, certified businesses in our directory. This slide shows the six certifications we administer, the state uh, historically underutilized business certification, which we facilitate on behalf of the state, and our new um, certification um, that will be recognized shortly, the LGBT business enterprise certification, which we actually will not administer. We're entering into an agreement with the National LGBT Chamber of Commerce to actually accept um, the businesses that they certify and include them in, in, our, um, in our directory. Um, now they've actually agreed to actually make sure that the requirements, um, that they mirror the requirements that we have for our local businesses. So the, the requirements will, will match. Our, MW, our minority business enterprise certification, our women business enterprise certification, our small business enterprise certification, and our persons with disabilities business enterprise certifications can be used on city of Houston contracts for credit. I'm, and I'm actually gonna go through the requirements for each of these certifications in a few moments few moments. Now, you, we certify on behalf of, behalf of the U.S. Department of Transportation, and those two certifications for these federal projects are disadvantaged business enterprise as well as the airport concessions disadvantaged business enterprise um, certification, which as the name denotes, that certification can actually only be used on airport, on airport um, concession projects. As I mentioned, the uh, we do have an, a new LGBT initiative. The mayor actually just maybe two weeks ago, he signed an executive order that reinforces the city's commitment to the inclusion of, of the National LGBT Chamber of Commerce certified um, LGBT business uh, enterprises. And that commitment is really, uh, while that commitment, it doesn't include actually including LGBTBEs in, the, in uh, meeting goals, we've committed to increase in our outreach efforts to the community as well as tracking their uh, participation in city contracting to just see what level of participation um, currently exists, at least for the, ne the, the next few years. 
So I did um, what this slide I wanted to just showcase that our certifications are not only to use City of Houston uh, to meet City of Houston contract goals, but as this slide shows, many there are many entities um, in the region that actually recognize our certification, and we were talking about that a bit a bit earlier. So we have actually only about 25% of our certified firms use their certifications for City of Houston projects. Only 25%. A lot of a lot our certification is free. Free, free, free. So a lot of lot of uh, businesses come and seek certification certification through us, and then use our certification elsewhere. So you have Metro that actually recognize our certification, uh, TxDOT, Port of Houston, um, the um, EPA, the Houston Community College. Um, obviously, we, we facilitate certification on behalf of the State Hub, as well the Houston Housing Authority, and that's just to name a few. Um, as we were speaking about briefly earlier, um, you know, the, there are private entities also who recognize our certification. I think based on Susan's question, I'm going to make sure that we have a comprehensive list of who's actually, um, who's actually recognizing and utilizing our certification. And we certainly want to, we're interested in increasing the list of, of pri private sector entities that are actually um, will recognize and utilize our certification. If I might just add here, I mean, it, it really, I think, is uh, would be um, a great thing for companies to accept it because it is free. You know, the other uh, certification processes that are available, you know, cost, I think, start beginning at $750. So it's great, you know, to be able to provide something. And it's basically the same paperwork and certification process, isn't it, Marsha? Yes, it, 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 it is. And we actually facilitate, we fast track um, certification on behalf of a couple of entities, um, a, a Houston Minority Supplier Development Council, as well as the Women Business Enterprise Alliance, because our certification processes are, are so similar. So this slide uh, actually shows the universe of certifications uh, companies have. Um, while we have um, 4,393 um, companies that are certified, I know that number 7,946 900, 7, is certainly significantly higher, but this just shows, because a company can have many certification, this just shows the universe of certifications that our companies have. We certify in these 13 industry categories that are listed here. Um, almost 40% of the companies that are certified are actually WBE certified companies. Uh, so we'd certainly love to see that percentage to be higher than 40%. Um, as you can see from the slide, while WBEs are represented in the 13, throughout the 13 industry categories in which we certify, a majority of WBEs are certified in two areas. Uh, in the business services and support and creative uh, products and services area, 490 are certified in that area, and in construction, about 302. So those are the two highest. Um, construction, certainly, um, I understand for companies pursuing opportunities with the city, that's the, you know, that's where we, that constitutes, that particular industry constitutes a majority of the, the city's uh, spend. I also wanted to share with you the city's spend over the past three fiscal years uh, with certified firms. Um, there's certainly been from this slide a, a significant increase in the dollar spend from $360 million in 2018 to 551 in 19 and a whopping $741 million in uh, last fiscal year. And this slide, um, self-explanatory, shows a breakdown by gender. So the previous slide actually showed that WBEs were awarded about $80 million in fiscal year 2020. But the actual number of awards to, um, to women-owned firms is higher. Those are the ones that uh, awards where the uh, participation, the gold credit was listed for a WBE. But of course, you have MBE certified companies that are also owned by women, and so they may have been using their MBE certification for a particular project. There are also SBE firms that are actually um, owned by women. So the number really is about $200 million that were awarded in, that was awarded in fiscal year 20 to, uh, to women-owned businesses. 
The other, I know it's weird to actually have an other in this pie chart, but these are instances where um, there's been money that's been identified for certified firms, but those firms have not been um, identified as yet. So we don't know whether or not the companies that will be used will be women um, or, or my, minority uh, business enterprises. And so, what are requirements for certification? So you must be, for our local certifications as well as our federal certifications, the company must be at least 51% owned, managed, and controlled by a minority, a female, a person with a di disability, or a socially and economically disadvantaged individual. For the federal program, the standard is that a business has to have to has to establish that they're socially and economically uh, disadvantaged. You can certainly do that presumptively through race, through gender, but there's an opportunity for people who don't fit into either category to establish that they, based on their background, based on their um, their journey in life, uh, they're socially and economically disadvantaged. Another requirement is that the applicant must, must maintain a significant presence in these 10 counties, one of these 10 counties that are listed here. That means that at least one person in the business has to be regularly based um, in one of these counties. That's for our local certification. For our persons with disabilities business enterprise certification, that requires that the applicant submitted a disability affidavit and a letter from their medical doctor or disability rating for, from the Department of Veteran Affairs or disability determination from the Department of Defense for that certification. For a small business enterprise certification, which actually requires an applicant to be in a construction or construction related field, that's the only time that that, that certification can be used. This is our only race and gender conscious, um, race and gender neutral rather, um, local certification that we have. And for the federal certifications, the DBE and the ACDBE, the applicant has to must have a personal net worth that's less than $1.32 million, which excludes the value of their home and their ownership interest um, in the business. There is no local presence requirement for the DBE or the ACDBE certification. And we encourage uh, for, for the federal certification, you have to be certified in your home state first which would be Texas. And once you get certified as a DBE or ACDBE in your home state, you can actually become certified in any other state um, across the nation. But the rules require that you have to start the certification, you have to complete the certification process and be certified in your home state. But there we encourage businesses that get certified as DBEs or ACDBEs to seek certification elsewhere because if you're an ACDBE, the airport concessions disadvantaged business enterprise, you can leverage opportunities in airports across uh, the nation. So for all certification types, the owner must be the, um, must have the training expertise to perform the work. This is, this can be a bit of a pain point. Um, it can't, for our local certification, you cannot rely on someone else in the organization to perform the core functions of that business. If no one ever, no one else shows up in the business, you have to be be able to execute whatever the main functions of the, that business is. So we look at the resume, we look at just experience generally, as well as if the if the uh, business requires a license, that license or certificate has to be issued in the owner's name in the owner applicant's name. The firm must be for profit, no nonprofits, independent and currently functioning. When we're evaluating the size of a business, if the company is not independent, we're looking at the, um, the gross revenues of any affiliated business, and that will influence our determination of whether or not a business is small, which brings me to my next requirement is that um, the business has to meet the Small Business Administration size standard for that particular industry classification. So it varies based on the industry that you're in. You know, it could be $20 million um, maximum or $50 million maximum. So it really, again, varies based on industry, but, you, but the business has to be determined to be small. And for our program, you have to be registered to, to um, as a vendor or a supplier with our procurement uh, division. That's the last thing that has to be completed um, before we issue our certification. In order to do business with the city, you have to be registered 
um, with our procurement division. And so I wanted to just briefly also just kind of um, give you just a high level overview of the process. So there is a uh, pre-certification workshop and my next slide will actually cover some virtual options that it's not required, not required to attend, but highly encouraged. Um, right now our, virtual, our workshops are all virtual. You can actually access them 24 seven. We also have live workshops where there is a Q&A option, um, but it's important to really understand the ins and outs of the certification process because it can unfortunately get, get um, get complicated at times. So we wanna make it as, as you know, as um, straightforward as possible. All applications must be submitted online. We don't, we haven't accepted uh, manual applications in a couple of years. And you can go on our website at houstontx.gov forward slash OBO for instruction and, and details. And on the last slide, it will also contain our, um, our website address. So the next step, obviously, submit your application online. There internally, once you've submitted your application, we have an intake staff that does preliminary screening of the application um, to make sure that all there's a, they have a checklist of items that are required in order to determine whether or not an application is substantially complete. So do they have 80% of what they need for that application to move to a certification officer? And so if the application is not at least not substantially uh, complete, they'll reach back out and ask for additional uh, information, but they will not move the application forward until it's deemed to be substantially complete. Once it's substantially complete, then it goes to a certification officer who then performs a desk audit, looks at a desk and financial audit, looks at um, the application from begin soup to nuts and also uh, performs a site visit if needed. So our site, site visits have been done virtually during COVID. Um, we've actually seen an incredible amount of success in doing um, the site visits uh, virtually. So hopefully we can maintain that, especially for our federal projects as a, as a part of our process going forward because it allows us to move faster through the application process. Once the certification officer makes a recommendation, then there is a committee, a certification committee that reviews that recommendation and uh, renders a decision. If the decision is to approve the certification, um, then the uh, applicant will receive a, a certificate of certification. If the decision is to, um, to deny, it will be deemed a tentative denial, and then um, applicants will have an opportunity to appeal um, that denial to me and the assistant director. For the Fed, that's for the local program. For the federal program, however, the appeal would actually go to the U.S. Department of Transportation. It would not be internal, unless it dealt with particular reasons for denial. I do want to mention, and I have to thank Susan. Oh, I can't stop thanking Susan for this. But Susan was instrumental in, cre in increasing the number of certification officers we have. I mean, in in a day, the mayor, based on Susan's advocacy, increased the addition of a certification officer uh, uh, ahead to our pool, which is something that had not happened in years. And so we we still have Susan. We're still working through our um, our certification backlog. We we've seen a you know um, the number of applications double from an average of 50 to 100. Um, during COVID, but we were at about 12 months or more. We're now down to about six months. Um, oh, so we're getting we're getting there. We want to get down to 90 mm -hmm. and potentially 30 days. So we're we're certainly working on that. But I I can't thank you enough for your support and advocacy oh. around that. Well, you deserve it. My goodness, it's uh, amazing you were doing what you were doing on the staff you had. <laughs> yes, I'm gonna just ask. Yeah something too and I know you are going to present us with a list of the organizations that accept your certification do other I notice the vast area that you cover are accept um, certification from you know the different counties do any of the other cities use use you I know Harris County is aren't they on their new OBO that they just um, did are they going to use you yeah, we would we would like to we would like some reimbursement for that. Um, <laughs> no, I understand. We would, and we're working on that. 
But yes, no, Harris County plans on, you know, they're developing their program and they're planning on using our certification. I mean, our certificate, yes, yeah, it's, it's easily accessible, but um, are there other cities? There may very well be. I just, um, you asked some really good questions. Um, I'm just not aware of which which other cities are actually accepting our certification. That's and another we, research project. I would project. think they would pay you something, you know, to, to do it, obviously, because y'all can't oh, carry yes. all the overhead, but I think that would really be a, a great um, asset for other areas to, to offer. <clears throat> yes, I, I have definitely mentioned, you know, um, get entered into some kind of agreement with Harris County because it, that will increase our pipeline of applications significantly once their program is is underway and we with our existing staffing that's just it's going to be um, it's going to be too much. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, um, I do encourage um, um, viewing the certification workshop which is available online. Um, you know, like many other entities, we had to uh, change the way that we delivered information and services. We didn't want to lose any quality in the delivery of our services, so we converted a lot of our services to be accessible on a virtual platform. So um, we do have 24-7, you can access our, our, our certification workshops. Our certification team also hosts uh, live virtual um, certification workshops every, um, and which includes a Q&A every uh, first and third Tuesday of each month at, um, at 2 p.m. And of course, at any point, you can reach out um, to the office if you have specific questions um, about certification. So I did wanted to also um, just mention some of our other services, uh, free services that we do provide. Um, in addition to certification, we offer a one-stop shop uh, for small businesses. Uh, this is regardless of certification. Um, you can take advantage of this. Uh, these are for businesses wishing to start at all stages, operate or grow um, in the Houston metropolitan area. Um, this is through our OBO Solutions Center. All services are free, like I mentioned, including our new business guides available in multiple language, languages online. We also provide information about permits, about licensing, fee schedules, um, provide financial counseling and access to information about contract and opportunities regionally, not just with the city. We also have a dedicated business development manager who provides one-on-one -on -one, uh, business counseling. Um, on our website, um, I mean, there's just a, a significant amount of information that can be leveraged, including our access granted webinar series, which we launched with the goal of educating small businesses about ways to overcome challenges um, brought on by COVID-19. Um, the webinars actually cover topics such as um, virtual networking, financial assistance program, contract bidding, development, legal resources, et cetera. And that's again available on our website. We also have, um, in terms of business developments, we have several programs that can assist businesses and who, who are in various stages um, in industries, businesses who want to increase their capacity to take on larger projects and do business with the city of Houston can take advantage of our Build Up Houston uh, capacity building program. That's a seven month program which provides tools and education for small businesses to create a three year strategic growth plan. While we've opened this business uh, in to businesses and while we've opened this program to businesses in the construction industry in the um, for the past five years, this year we actually offered the program to businesses in uh, retail, food and beverage, hospitality, et cetera. We really wanted to open it up because we understand we understand that these businesses have actually all been affected by COVID-19. We we have a class of about 17 participants this year. And we use a curriculum that's focused on helping establish businesses take their companies to the next level for continued growth and success. Building on the success of Build Up Houston, we also have Accelerate Latinx, which is really the Spanish version of Build Up Houston using the same um, curriculum. And also in collaboration with, the, with Metro, Port of Houston, the Houston um, Independent School District, HCC and Houston First Corporation, we're offering the Interagency Mentor Proje Program, which encourages uh, developing businesses to learn from the experiences of seasoned companies with the intent that this will lead to opportunities to partner on future projects. 
This fall, we will open for the Turner School of Construction Management an eight session program designed to enhance the technical and managerial experience of small contractors and uh, entrepreneurs in the construction um, industry. So on each, in each of my presentations these days, I have to, I really have to promote this free legal consultation service. We offer the Houston Small Business Legal Consultation Program, um, which is a coordinated effort with Vincent and Elkins and nearly 20 other top tier law firms. Through a network of volunteer attorneys, um, this program provides participants free legal consultation by phone about contracts, repayment of loan, relief programs, taxes, commercial leases, employment, intellectual property, general business matters. They're really open. These attorneys are actually are poised. They're excited to be able to help local small businesses navigate legal issues. Again, this is this is so free. And since the inception of this program last May, we have had 100% placement rate for all for applicants. I think this this service is so amazing. Um, more and more, more people, more business owners should be taking advantage of this. You have premier lawyers who are dedicating time to provide um, to provide assistance. So I certainly encourage you to get the word out about this service. Finally, there are many ways you can connect with us. Um, our weekly e-blast provides access to information about virtual events, pre-bid meetings, procurement opportunities. If you'd like to be added to that list, I can drop this email in the chat. OBOSC at HoustonTX.gov. Um, signing up for the mailing list will give you access to our bi monthly newsletter um, as well, Insights to Opportunity, um, which I think we'll need to feature your organization. We also host quarterly I'm Certified What's Next in an attempt to, to demystify the city's procurement process to help newly certified companies to just navigate the opportunities with us as well as opportunities um, um, regionally. As I close, I invite you to follow us on our various social media uh, platforms. You, we definitely, we have someone actually who's dedicated to, to keeping those platforms up to date to provide information about, you know, services that we offer. Um, I have someone who's working, scouring to find grants that are national, local, international grants for small businesses and getting the word out. Um, about that. We offer so much more than what I've covered today. Um, I need more time to cover them. Please visit our website. And uh, here's our contact information on this last slide. Thank you so much for your time today. I'm, I, I'm happy to take whatever questions now, or you can certainly reach out to me directly. There was a question if the in the chat, if the legal services, um, if you have to live in the city or can you live outside the city? You can live outside the city. That's great. That's, that is a, an amazing opportunity. That's great. So we're opening it up to questions now. Does anyone have any other questions? I know, um, Stephanie, why don't you share a little bit about <clears throat> how you've used um, your certification with, with NASA specifically, isn't it? More opportunities with NASA? Yes, uh, Susan, we use, uh, so MEIT is a woman owned certified um, small business through the SBA. So, um, you know, our work that we do with NASA is on a federal program. Um, and so we have the, we use that federal certification, um, but um, kind of what Marsha was talking about with regards to opportunity within the city, I actually have another small company on the side um, and we are, um, WBEA certified, City of Houston certified. Um, as a woman-owned minority company, there's three of us who got together to put this um, consulting company together. So we've been through the process. It was actually streamlined because we um, got our local um, certification through WBEA first and then went through City of Houston. So Marsha was talking about that streamline. And it's, um, it's a great way to help us um, see opportunities that are available. Um, it's kind of a side gig for all of us. So um, we now don't- When you sleep, when do you sleep? But it's a lot of fun. So we actually do consulting for the construction industry, which is a little bit um, different, but um, 
you know, I, I bring my um, expertise in contracts and, and federal contracting. One of our partners is an attorney and uh, the other partner, she um, is a CFO within a, con a construction company that's family owned. And so we kind of bring together um, some of those elements to, to do this consulting firm to help companies with their procurement and some of their financial um, bookkeeping and things like that that they may need. Um, so we um, we're familiar with this program, and and they're they're also beneficial, and they're great ways to um, look for opportunities as a sub, um, you know. And, and the free advice is is so helpful. Um, I didn't realize actually, Marsha, that the city of Houston offered the free legal advice. I know that some of the like. Um, small business development centers offer that, but I did not realize city of Houston had that resource. So I learned something new today that I was not aware of. That's great. Uh, we will add it to our resource page too, as well. That, that's great. And, and we would like to be, if there are places for um, organizations supporting you, because we are now with the Women's Business Center and want to be listed because <clears throat> we'll be sending people back and forth. Um, Gosh, I'm really impressed with all you offer. So anyone else um, have any questions? And one thing I did, Marcia, did, are there um, many, are any companies in real estate? Are there opportunities in real estate to be certified woman-owned or? So, you know, I, um, since I've been here, um, I, there aren't a lot. So I know our general services uh, department that manages a lot of our facilities and locations um, periodically put out solicitations that are focused, that are real estate focused, but it's far and few between. Few between, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, the city, that's why we encourage, we really encourage um, companies that get certified with us to certainly scour the opportunities that exist with the city and to speak with our business development manager who can kind of, you know, help you navigate what are the, what are those opportunities, but really look outside the city as well. Um, and it looks like a lot of companies are doing that because only 25% are really using their certification uh, with us. But yeah, there are a vast amount of opportunities elsewhere. Okay. Christine, Lisa, do you have a question? Yes, I, I have a question. Of what's the general process, uh, time frame in getting the certification through the city of Houston? So we're looking at about six months right now. Um, there are opportunities to expedite, but they are far and few between. It really needs to be that we have, you know, I get a lot of requests to expedite. One of the first things I ask, um, I ask my team to do is to let me know this particular area that this company is seeking, cert seeking certification in. How many of the companies do we have certified in that area? You know, if we already have a significant number, and I understand prime contractors want to use people that they're comfortable with, businesses that they're comfortable with, but if there are a host of other companies that already went through the certification process that were diligent about it, we expect, you know, we encourage uh, prime contractors to leverage that, that uh, list. One of the things I didn't mention um, earlier was just a really encouraging because we have such a um, significant pipeline of applicants to encourage companies to get started in the certification uh, process before that opportunity pops up. Yes. You know, well ahead of time, we're free. So you don't have to worry about having to pay up front and then not know when that opportunity is going to come. And we have a, for our local program, you don't need to get, we don't need to revisit your certification until three years out. You know, uh, for the DB, for the federal program, it is an annual uh, recertification process, but for the local program, it's every three years. So it's, it's worth it. It's worth it. We really plan ahead of time, but we're, we're averaging about six months on uh, now. But as I said, we are, we are fervently working to get that done. I will be so happy when we get to 90 days. I tell my team 30 days. I'm like, okay, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> Um, I, I have another question then. So it, it, I'm doing research on the different women owned business certifications. And from what I, the information you provided here, it looks as though, and correct me if I'm wrong, um, it looks as though getting certified through the city of Houston feeds into the state and the federal. And so, it, okay. 
for federal, does that mean into the SBA um, cert women owned business certification? So getting, so for the state, for the state historically underutilized business certification, you could, as part of, as part of your application process with us to seek one of our local, one or all of our local certifications, you can actually elect on the application to actually also get certified as a historically underutilized business for the state. We have an agreement with them that we would facilitate that process. They have a couple of additional requirements, so they will actually double check those last requirements, but because a lot of their requirements actually match ours, we start the process okay. and so we forward your name to, uh, to the state. Now for the federal um, certification, those are certifications, the disadvantaged business enterprise as well as the airport concessions, disadvantaged business enterprise uh, certifications are solely for the US Department of Transportation projects. So Federal Highway, uh, Federal Transportation, uh, Federal Aviation solely for those, uh, for those um, departments. The SBA, they have a slew of other certifications that are, that are separate okay. um, from those. Okay, thank you for that clarification. Sure. Well, I think we're running out of time, but if there's one more question, we'll allow one more for, for Marcia. I have a quick question, this is April. Can you hear me? Yeah, sure. Yeah, and this is for Marcia. Hi, Marcia. Um, Hi. Hi, I'm already certified through the Houston Minority Supplier Development Council. Is there an agreement between the city of Houston and HMSDC? There is actually. Um, so we have two, we have the agreement between um, HMSDC and then and WBEA. So yes, but I will tell you the fast tracking works when you're, when you in, um, initiate the process. Okay. Um, so if you've been certified for a, a while, um, then you have to start a different application. You would have to start a different application with us if you've been certified with HMSDC. But chances are um, you should be able to get through our process relatively quickly because I wouldn't anticipate that there would be a lot of issues because our requirements are, so sim are similar. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. Well, Thank you again, Marsha, and we hope that you'll come back again uh, this year. We always love to see you, and I mean, amazing what you're doing, and uh, we want to meet your team as well, and I just wanted to share with everyone, too, on the call, Shayla and Linda are both here uh, to help you with any of your questions, help handhold, you know, any uh, kind of um, B2B that you're wanting to do. We have amazing opportunities to be able to introduce you to potential uh, customers you know, too as well, your branding, marketing, uh, we do a little bit of, of everything. So we encourage you to um, just to reach out to us and thank you again, all of our chapter leaders and our chapters, Baytown and Bay Area uh, for helping to host us today. And we'll be doing this again. I'm just really impressed with all of the um, businesses that are represented here today. So thank you again. So Shayla, when is the next workshop? Is that next, is that Brenda James or? Our no. next workshop is gonna be this oh, Thursday. Yeah. If you're free to join us during lunch from 12 to one, we'll have Brenda James speaking with us on mental health and happiness. And so please tune in if you would like the link, please. <clears throat> I can send it to you. Okay. <clears throat> well, thank you again. And well, thank you, Susan. Thank you for your continued support. Thanks again. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.